had an interesting night. Um, it was well past dark when we found a place to uh, wild camp. So that was our mistake because uh, we ended up wild camping, um, I guess, on somebody's property. And they weren't too happy about it. So um, while we were setting up our tent, we were almost complete with it. One more, one more pull to put in. Um, he came out with his dog and uh, you could just tell by his mannerisms he was not happy. So we told him no problem, no problem, we'll see, see, we'll move. So we ended up moving and then uh, finding, where did we find a place at, Chantille? Uh, this camper spot where they can just park their campers and sleep. We just rolled up underneath some shed there. Yeah, so there was like an old... Um, I would say old, but just an out of season uh, restaurant, like that had open open seating, and we just kind of tucked our uh, sleeping bags in there and slept on their uh, basically floor. <laughs> so glad the winds have died down. They were horrendous yesterday. Mm -hmm. Wow! Look at this. So pretty out here. Beautiful canyon. Look at that. Picture perfect. <laughs> At the lighthouse, we enjoyed some incredible seaside views and snapped a few pictures. Pretty much feel like we have the whole park to ourselves, except for the people that work here. And this big food truck is coming up. <laughs> meet me. Give them lots of room. Before long, we are back in Port Laguette, making our way towards Salvador Dali's home. This was a unique opportunity to learn more about this often eccentric Spanish artist first by visiting his home in Port Laguette, and then the museum in Figueres. Since my Canon video camera was broken, I used this opportunity to create a photo montage from the photographs I captured using an iPhone 6. I'm not particularly into Salvador Dali's art style, but I can appreciate him as an artist. Yeah. But yeah, it was a gorgeous home. I liked how um, there was almost 
there was almost even more outside living space or relaxing space than there was oh, inside. Right? Yeah, definitely, which was really cool. Definitely want to be free from Spain, huh? Mm -hmm. When you visit this area, it is obviously apparent that Catalonia wants its independence from Spain. The Estelada, or the Lone Star flag, is flown over much of this region to express their support for their independence. Most recently, in October of 2017, Catalan officially declared its independence from Spain. However, it was not granted. The Spanish constitution makes it unlawful to declare independence and accused the Catalan government of rebellion and sedition. Shortly afterwards, the Catalan leaders who orchestrated the independence movement were imprisoned, most of which are still in prison today. The yellow ribbons symbolize the solidarity with the leaders of the pro-independence organizations. You see them hanging from trees, fences, balconies, and unfortunately spray painted on walls, signs, and statues. That evening we found a campsite near Montagut, about two hours southeast of Andorra. Chantil's bike, a little white chocolate here. I'm going to start this morning. Dead battery. Dead battery. So, we're going to have to jumper it. Fortunately we have this uh, micro start, personal power supply. Jump starts any vehicle, powers USB devices. It's important. So, we'll give it a shot. And hopefully we'll be able to start this thing up and we'll be on our way. Disclaimer, the Sport MicroStart is a great product and would have worked if Chantel's motorcycle didn't have the cold start problem as well. Well, that didn't work, so we're gonna try to push start it now. See if that works. The problem is this bike is kind of difficult to push start. Uh, you need quite a lot of speed to make it work, and Chantel's bike doesn't really start good well in the cold. So um, we'll try this route. All right, Travis took the bike, and let's see if he's got it started or not. <laughs> He took down this beautiful hill that we've been camped on. And look at that. He has got it running. Amazing. Amazing. The hero. You introduce it. Tell us what we're doing today. Uh, we are going to Andorra, which I'm so excited about. Um, it's a teeny tiny country, which, I don't know, has snow, I guess. <laughs> We'll tell you more about it afterwards. It's in the mountains. Um, it's in between um, Spain and France. And we've never been there. So um, a friend of ours, Matt, recommended that we go there. Binks, Binks is his name. He said uh, it's a really cool place. So we're going to go check it out. Keep an eye out. See if we can pass this guy. Too curvy right now. Yep. There it is. Enjoy the open road!
new country. It wasn't long before we reached the miniature museum in Ordino, Andorra. The miniature museum had a wide variety of multicultural exhibits. They had a beautiful collection of babushka dolls, also known as the Russian nesting doll. They also featured the Chinese art of inner painting, where beautiful scenes are painted on the inside of bottles, using the tiniest of curved brushes. But the most impressive was the incredible tiny artwork of a Ukrainian artist, Nicholas Siedreski. He is renowned for being the best in the world at creating these magical miniatures that fit inside the eye of a needle. the museum I thought I was kind of neat that they brought different countries together and uh, they talked respectfully about each one of them which is pretty cool. Yeah, Russia, China, and Andorra. Yeah, and then they spoke French and Spanish and English. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, especially for for me or you or like that. We only know one language really well. Right, right. That was nice of them. Andorra is a beautiful country and we would have stayed longer, but we were excited to get to Barcelona to pick up our new camera. Please tune in for the next episode where we swing by the big city of Barcelona, pay our respects to Eco Homo, and walk among the magnificent village of Abrasin. If you like this video, please give us thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you can be alerted to new videos. Thank you.